5.30. Oh, I got it. Okay. Then it being 5.30, I want to call this meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority, uh, April 24th, 2023, 5.30 p.m. to order. And the first item of business is the public hearing tonight on Northampton Housing Authority's state annual plan. And as per our regulations, I turn this over to executive director to run the uh, public meeting, public hearing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the purpose of the public hearing, which was posted at the state properties management office and website on February 1st, 2023, so as to provide the public ample opportunity to review the plans as they were being developed and make suggestions to allow the Board of Commissioners to hear comments from interested parties about the annual plan. A meeting was also held with the Four Sander Tenants Association on April 13th, 2023, which resulted in no additions or changes. The state annual, the annual, plan, annual, plan. The state annual plan is a DHCD template which consists of the budget, which was previously approved by the board, maintenance policies and our capital improvement plan. At this time, are there any comments from the public regarding the state annual plan? If so, please raise your hand so that I can address you. I have a question. Am I public or am I board regarding this? Uh, board. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, I want to suggest that you have the option of being both Either. a tenant Either. and a board member. It's not the time for board member comments, I but I think it's appropriate for you to speak as a tenant. Thank you. Um, well, I looked over the board and there's some, um, I guess I'll, there's some there's some errors, so I'll, uh, or there need to be some adjustments. So I guess I could do that doing the board. But actually, I feel like this is a bit of, ill time, I think it was announced. I never heard, uh, I didn't go to the one in Fort Sander, but it was put in a newspaper that I don't think the average tenant, at least here, could afford to even have that. And uh, I don't think there was notice and I don't think there was any participation whatsoever with residents here. I can't speak at Cahill, I can't speak at McDonald, I can't speak at, um, uh, what is that? Um, Florence or Tobin, or uh, I don't know what happened with Fort Sander. Um, I think that, it is really important, you know, with tenants that you include them uh, on what's going on. Tenants here have been overwhelmed with this friendly notice that came out and trying to figure that out. They've been a little trying to figure out a little bit with the recertification. So there hasn't been much talk uh, about it. We don't have an LTO yet. We would have probably had it by now, but there was always this issue of um, who could afford to get the copies made off. I know that is the, the ED is encouraged uh, to help tenants get a union to get these informations out. But I think it is ill-timed and it will be one of non-participation. And I think this should be tabled to the next month or next two months so you can get participation. You want to hear what residents and tenants have to say. Is that your hand, Marilyn? No. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbun. Are there any other public comments during this public hearing? Is this the time for a tenant to speak or no? Yes, ma'am. If you're if you would like to comment on the annual plan, this would be the time for you to speak. If you could please just state your name and where you live. Um, um I, I would like to speak on another issue. So just tell me when that when I can do that. Okay. Okay, this is actually um, public comment, the public hearing part of that. And so we'll announce tenant comment when it comes to items for residents um, at, at that time. Okay. Thank you. And are there any other comments regarding the public hearing on the um, annual plan for the state properties? Okay, I will now close the state annual plan public hearing and turn the meeting back over to the chairperson. There was one public comment. I have now closed the state annual plan public hearing. You're, uh, uh, Madam Chair, you're muted. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to be respectful of everyone speaking. 
So we have, um, uh, uh, for uh, expedience, moved the um, annual audit by Markman Associates to the forefront of this meeting, after which we will move directly to the um, tenant comments. Or, or is that how we wrote it on our list here? Um, um, Madam Chair, I um, think you would like me to call the roll. Yes. All right. Good. Please call the roll. And then yes. I think we move first to the audit and then to the comments. Please call the roll. Yes. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones will be absent today. Okay. Then, um, if I understand correctly, in order for expedience, we're moving the presentation by Markham Accountants and Advisors first to the top of the agenda. So, so, so um, Madam Chair, I've asked um, uh, Markham Accountants and Advisors uh, to present uh, the annual um, uh, audit, um, which I'm proud to announce that there were no findings. Um, and uh, they have sent uh, Mr. Remus uh, to represent them and to answer any potential questions any of you may have. Um, I'd like to turn the floor over to Mr. Remus from Marcus and Associates. Well, thank you for, for having me and I'm, I'm glad to and happy to uh, present the financial statements for the authorities fiscal year that ended June 30, 2022. Let's see. Could uh, you allow me to share my screen that way I can present a copy of the uh, financial statements? You should be yes, please. So hopefully everyone can see the, uh, the PDF here. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. Andrew, thank you. Yep. And I'm going to jump to the to the back where we have this nice summary. So if, if you have a hard copy in front of you, it's page 56. And this is essentially a summary of our audit results for the year ended at June 30, 2022. So at the top, it covers the financial statements. And we say we have an unmodified opinion. That is to say it's, it's a clean opinion. So that means that the, the numbers and accounts accurately represent the authority's financial position. In addition to that, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control over financial reporting or any noncompliance associated with the financial statements. And our annual audit is a two-part audit. The first part is an audit of the authority's financial statements selects the accounts and numbers. And the second part is an audit on the authority's compliance with its major federal program. And for our fiscal year 2022, that program was the housing voucher cluster, which included the Section 8 program, as well as the emergency housing voucher program. So on that, which are for our purposes, that gets combined into what is known as the housing voucher cluster. Our opinion on that program was also unmodified. And in addition, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control over compliance or any matters of non-compliance. Does anyone have any questions on this high level summary before I jump into some of the financial highlights. Oh, one quick question. Yes. This is a this is a general overview. You said as a summary, and I yes. I wouldn't ask you to give a grade, but on a scale of one to four, do you have a number? For in terms of what for for a grade? Well lowest being zero and four being highest? Or let, let me rephrase that. What are you like asking me to, to grade? 
I, I yeah, let me uh, let me overall... skip that to the end end of your presentation. Go ahead, please. Excuse okay. my interruption. Let me. I'm going to jump forward in the financial statements to the management discussion and analysis. <clears throat> so on page ten here, you see a, a condensed summary of the summary of net position. So this is essentially the authority's balance sheet. And you will see that we go down to this net position, which is essentially the authority's equity balance. You are showing a deficit in unrestricted net position, which that is a little confusing because included in that balance is the authority's long-term pension and OPEB liabilities of roughly $6 million. So if you back out those long-term liabilities that are being funded over the 20 or 30 years, whatever the actuary has determined, you're in a net surplus position for unrestricted, which is evidenced by the authority having an unrestricted cash and cash equivalents balance of roughly four and a half million dollars. So that unrestricted just means that the authority can use it for any program purpose. So for example, section eight money, the authority has to use it for section eight purposes. You can't commingle section eight money with public housing money or with state funded properties money. And if we move to page 12, we have a comparison of the authority's income statement comparing fiscal year 2022 to fiscal year 2021. And you'll see that overall, the authority's change in net position at the bottom here was a, a decrease of $162. So that is also a little misleading because included in this amount is 572,000 in depreciation expense. And depreciation expense is, is a non-cash expense. So if you back out that non-cash expense, the authority roughly generated a, a net operating revenue of $570,000. And with that, the operating revenues decreased slightly from the prior year, and this was mostly due to the timing of when the authority recognized revenue associated with the, the CARES Act grants that they received from HUD. And then the other largest change was in repairs and maintenance, and this was due to an, an overall increase in materials and contract costs as the authority kind of transitioned out of the, the COVID environment and trying to catch up on some maintenance costs that had to be deferred due to, to the due to the ongoing pandemic. Does anyone have any any questions? Go go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> yes, please, Commissioner Tarbutton. Sorry, I just like to be recognized. So because I'll go off without. Uh, recognition. Um, I do have a question. Um, I was thinking, um, I just took a NARO course with um, finance, I think was her name, I, I'm trying to look forward, Edwin. Um, so I think this stuff is fascinating. I wish that there was a committee or you could have come and you could talk with us a little bit more on that, I uh, more what's going on, because all the numbers and things look okay. I don't see much of a problem with it. But I, what I noticed in that class that I took, board finance, and what I'm seeing here, NAJ gets lots of money. You know, there are a lot of government subsidies. There are a lot of, uh, you know, grants and things that are there to help with tenants and this to run this organization. So that part, I'm impressed. What I'm trying to understand is, for example, how it is, um, how it is actually spent. And I'd like to know, for example, because that's the part that's confusing to me. So I'd like for it to be less confusing. 
and I'm doing everything on my end um, to uh, rectify that. But I just, I get very nervous when I get stuff like this and I don't really know exactly because I'd, I'd like to talk to you. I wish we had, we used to, we used to have a finance committee. It's on the bylaws, but I've never met. And this is my third uh, year on this board. So I get really nervous. It's like under my nose, this is here and it looks all good. For example, I'm under, I'm trying to understand tenant services. Can you tell me what that is? So that tenant services, I believe I have. So let tenant services is made up of mostly salaries and benefits, which I believe you have a, a resident yeah. service coordinator. So it is that individual's salary and benefits associated with that person gets grouped to that to the tenant services line. Oh, okay. It would make more sense if it was resident services because I'm thinking tenants like, you know, we don't have to copy stuff. We don't have like a, you know, a car to go and copy our stuff. We don't get money here. We don't have a L two O, we don't LTO in this building, and we don't have uh, that I know of. I don't know about the rest of them. I'm just speaking of that. We don't see the money from the, you know, the sale of the sodas or the washing machine. So I'm wondering where this stuff is going. I'm really kind of interested in it. Also, I wanted to found the woman's name. Her name is Teresa Ewald. She's a CPA with Fenton Ewald and Associates. Are you familiar with them at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she's the one who gave the um, presentation, and what she told me. Uh, when I talked to her, because I didn't go to an, I didn't go to a convention with Nairo and she said, oh, I thought you were going to go. And I said, well, it hadn't been approved in the budget. And she said, looked uh, puzzled saying, but it's already there. You get, there's money already there. There's even money for 12,000 for travel. What, what do you mean you have to put it in your budget when it's already there? And I said, I just, this is what I'm told. So I don't understand that because you would think, as she would say, Professional development, especially for board members and staff, is tantamount to a successful board. It's almost like that's encouraged. And so I get, now we're going to be voting on something later on about it, but why are we voting on something that, from what I got from her, that is something that's already there for us? I don't know if it's always utilized. I, I do it uh, every Saturday. I was in those classes trying to get my NARO certification. I even learned there was a Nick NARO and then all this stuff. So Something's not, something's not clear. And I wish that I, I, as a board, we could all go through this fine tooth comb. I don't know, maybe, we, you know, I guess there's no financial accountant. Maybe that's the person that you are. Oh, but I have, I have questions and I have concerns. Thank you. Is that a, is that a question for Mr. Remus? No, I, it was a comment and it was through the question. Okay, he thank you for her. that. Oh, you interrupted me. Okay, thanks. No, no, no. Is there more? Commissioner Tarbutton, please go on. Are there any other questions for Mr. Remus? Okay, then I think we move on to, I think that's the end of the presentation. Yep. We, we will, I, I know that uh, Director Leeper is trying to address me, but She's muted. And so you couldn't hear the dog barking. Andrew, yeah. thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to present. Um, I know that, you know, um, it's a lot of work to do our audit because you guys go through it with a fine tooth comb. Um, and I truly do appreciate all the hard work that you and the fee accountant and all of your staff do. Um, in, you know, helping us to know where we need to get better. And in this case, we did well. So thank you. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me. And if anyone has any follow-up questions, feel free to uh, to reach out and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Do you have your contact thank information? Uh, I can go. send it to Kara and she can pass it along. Thank, thank you, you so much, Andrew. And um, we really appreciate it and I'm glad we could accommodate your time constraints. At well, this point, we will move right on to tenant comments, please. And if Jack, if you don't mind calling those folks, I'll try to set my timer. 
Yeah, so the, the first person is actually labeled as tenant and they just unmuted themselves. So if you could just share your name and what building you live at for the minutes. Um, I, uh, my name is Penelope Wilder. I live in the Walter Salvo building. Um, and I wanted to talk about air conditioners. Um, I had heard on an NPR uh, station in um, New York that um, they were making uh, federal funds through the Housing Energy Assistance Program, HEAP, available to get air conditioners for elderly residents of public housing and to install them. So I thought, wow, this is like wonderful. There must be a program like this in Massachusetts. So I started uh, searching and calling and I found that there is such a program in Massachusetts. It's called LI HEAP, Low Income HEAP. Um, and the agency that's tasked, tasked with bringing this to um, public housing buildings where there are multiple units is um, lean multifamily. Now, uh, the NHA has worked with this agency before, so they would not even have to apply again. Um, I spoke with the assistant manager at Lean Multifamily, and at my request, she sent an email to Jose. After several days, a no response, I asked her to send another email, no response. I asked her to send an email to you, Jack, no response. So I then asked her to send an email to Cara, um, as yet no response. Um, we've already had a day in the mid nineties. Uh, these apartments become heat boxes, very humid and very high in temperature. As we know, the season is only going to get longer and longer and hotter and hotter. Um, and New York is uh, doing this under the rubric of building climate resilience with air conditioning. I think climate resilience is a very big thing right now. And also in New York, uh, the Department of Health is involved with this because they're seeing it as both a mental and a physical health issue, which it certainly is. So I'm just, like, where is the NHA with this? I mean, I went out and did all this legwork around this program. These are federal funds, state administered. So I would please like to know uh, it's urgent. Thank you so much. That is 33 minutes. And I'll just re remind you that we do not respond to tenant comments at this meeting. We oh. will try to get back to you. Yeah, we can't respond. This is just the time for you to air your grievances, you know, speak your mind to us because there's nothing on the agenda that relates to your specific items. It would be a violation of open meeting law for us to discuss it. So what we're going to do though, is take note of your concern and we'll make sure we get back to you. But I really appreciate your coming and giving your comments. Could um, the next person please come? Jack, could we turn to the next person, please? Jack, you're muted. So they are now unmuted. Um, Motorola Moto G, um, you are free to talk. Just please let us know your name and what building you live in. Hi, my name's Al Shagnon, Walter Stavo House. Hello. I was just uh, wanted to listen in on the meeting today. I really don't have any comments right at this time. Well, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Um, the, ne the next person who has the ability to unmute themselves is Angela Santanello. Hi, Angela. Well, hello there. Sorry, I had to pull over and stop for a moment. Um, I just wanted to give an update on the grant that the Walter Salvo Neighborhood Watch received. 
Um, we're still in the process of working with uh, Northampton, um, the city of Northampton. However, we're in the process of trying to get a fiscal sponsor. So we are in talks with an entity on that sponsorship. Um, hopefully it'll go through. If not, if any of you have any ideas on a fiscal sponsor that might be willing to help out with the, with the grants money, that would be great. We'd love the input. But as far as um, everything going with that, it's going well. We've got several ideas, and we need to get some meetings on board with, with NHA so that we can sort of discuss what we're wanting to accomplish in the community room to bring the Walter Salvo up to the 21st century with the computer systems and things. So that's all I have at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Santanello. I appreciate it. Uh, the next uh, person is labeled as citizen. I've asked them to unmute. I'm not sure if they're here as a public person or a resident. Um, citizen, you are able to unmute yourself. Um, and we will call on you again during public comment if you are not a resident. Um, and then also... Joella, Commissioner Tarva, and has her hand raised. I don't know if you're looking to make a tenant comment as well, Joella, but you'd be the last person um, on the list. Please, Ms. Tarva. You're up, Joella. I'm sorry. Please, Ms. Tarva. Oh, thought there were more. Okay, guys. Um, taking my hat off and putting the other one on. Um, yeah, uh, it's interesting that the, uh, there was a tenant talking about the air conditions. I uh, attended last week a workshop by DHC, uh, DHCD and it was, by, it was called Sustainability and Resilience and good stuff like that. And it was fascinating um, uh, uh, what's available. They also mentioned, and I have, the, I have it here somewhere, there is this thing, a website called Mass Shares, and they talked about that. I, for the first time, are hearing what this tenant is talking about, but they said Mass Shares. I went to the website, they gave me the address, and it said that they are there for, uh, what's the word, energy efficient appliances that are free for income eligible people. So it's at www.masssave.com. And his name was, uh, the facilitator was amazing. His name was Greg Abbey, A-B-B-E, he's with DHCD. This was a workshop by the Mel King Institute, and it was quite encouraging. So if this stuff is going on, I'm not quite sure because it wasn't just for people in public housing. It was for all of Massachusetts. They got money to do this, and they wanted to help people um, clean air. Let's be kind to the environment, and let's get some stuff here. Uh, uh, because I bought the air conditioner from housing, and I paid an extra 40, 50 bucks a month for nine months. So if that's possible, that it can be free to people. And I, I feel so, I don't know if everybody can afford that. Before then, I got some kind of air conditioner, it, it linked and licked, whatever. And somebody else got an air conditioner that they bought off of Craigslist, it had mold in it. So it would be nice if we got clean, efficient appliances that help people. And it's also cost effective, so it could save a lot of money for folks. So that's one thing. Another thing I would like to talk about is um, recertification, if it includes the care and medical expenses of pets who are service pets, is that the word, or emotionally supportive pets. Um, one of the workshops talked about that, that they put in all their expense. One person, 800, 900 bucks, how people can afford that. And that is factored into their recertification. Now that I don't, I don't really know. And so, um, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty much, and I wanted to say something. I appreciate the agenda being a little larger font, <laughs> it's a little easier to read, but uh, if we could uh, do that more, that would be really appreciated. That's it as a tenant. Thank you, Joella. Um, Thank you, Ms. Tarbutton. Is there anyone Arnie, else? I don't see anyone else. Okay. That, oh, and, the, and we've already called then for community and staff. Okay, thank you everybody for your comments and we will move on with the agenda. First item being approval of the March 2020. Oh, all right, yes, Director Lieber, yes. Did I miss something? You're muted. You're muted, Carol. Sorry about that. 
Um, I know, uh, Madam Chair, we don't ordinarily respond to people, but because um, I, I ask your permission to just make a statement about the lean multifamily program so that the while the whole entire board is here, we're all on the same page. I, I would ask you, actually, if you don't mind, if you could wrap that into your executive director report. Certainly, no problem. Thank you. And then I'll move first item of business will be approval of the March 2023 mm -hmm. minutes. So I will ask if there are any additions, corrections, deletions from among the board. I'll ask for a motion to approve. Move motion to approve. To approve. Okay, that's been moved by Commissioner Brooks, seconded Commissioner Richards. And now any uh, additional, I've asked any deletions. Oh, yes, Commissioner Tarbin. Um, I know it didn't come on that. Okay. It's about the board and agenda, but I just want to talk if that agenda included that to make a proposal for an agenda item, if that was included in last month, because I was told that's how I have to present an agenda item. So. Was that anything like that that happened in last month's meeting? Or is this something, because it was talked, it was discussed with me, so, but I didn't know if the board had decided that. Uh, and if so, I, I didn't mind. But. All, we're, all we're voting on now, all okay. we're voting on now is the transcribed minutes. Yeah, okay, uh, I'll abstain. Oh, is there a correction to the minutes? Did you read something that you think needs to be corrected? Well, the, what I asked is that was those uh, agenda items from last board men, um, minutes presented in a motion proposal form. Uh, they were, I think the minutes just shows them as presented orally as they were put on, on the floor. Um, am I correct in the transcription of the minutes there, Secretary Leeper? You need to unmute yourself, please. I apologize. Yes, Madam Chair. So um, you listened to the recording and you transcribed those motions as they were verbally made in the meeting. Yes. Um, and approval okay. minutes is part of your bylaws. Right. So I'm just asking if people would just uh, um, add any uh, corrections or additions or deletions to those meetings as to those minutes as listened to and transcribed those appropriate items from which. And so can we have any additions, corrections, deletions from anyone on the board? And hearing none, I'm gonna ask if we can take the roll, please to accept the minutes of the March, 2023 meeting. Yes, approval of the March, 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, I'll abstain. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, with four yeas and one abstention. Okay, that motion carries. Thanks, everyone. The next, we have no old business, and we do have a few items under new business. The first being the resolution. Uh, 2023 03, the approval of the fiscal year 2024 state annual plan. So I'll ask from the floor is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Uh, second. Moved com Commissioner Richards, seconded Commissioner Brooks to approve the FY 2024 state annual plan. Okay, we're open for discussion. Uh, look for a show of hands. Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, so that is just, that's the, uh, is that the annual plan that we talked about? Uh, that Kara uh, presented at the beginning of the meeting? Yeah, I'm gonna ask, oh. so uh, just so folks, when they're speaking, any questions are directed to me as the chair, and then I'll direct them to someone else. But I can answer that question for you. Yeah, I was hoping you would. Yeah, that's the plan that we presented and for which we had an, a, a hearing, public hearing, 20 minutes ago. 
Okay, I have a question. Um, the first page on the first page when it's talking about the commissioners, there's some errors with that. It has Jim Brooks as his term as a term expired as of August 8, 2021. It has me as expired and it has Emily Lawfer on there as commissioners and she's been gone. And if you could, I'd like for you to get my name uh, spelled correctly on that. And I have other questions with that. Hold on one second. Okay, before you go to those questions, to Secretary Lieber, could you correct those Scribner's errors? Yes, so that was, um, let me just make note. You'll see the board, you, you, you had some typos among the board. You can go through and you'll see that must yes. have been overlooked. Yeah, so, uh, and then I wanna go back to Commissioner Tarbutton's questions. Y yeah. And I'm assuming the questions to the director or questions to me. I'm asking you, you said you would di uh, direct it to the director, did you not? Okay. If you want to ask the director a question, you can just say through me and I'll direct it right to then we don't have, then you can just ask directly to come to director Leeper. Okay, well that was more confusing than it needed to be. All right. All right. And so the part with the LHA board uh, uh, commissioner, so that's going to be um, and then some of the things that it says advertise in uh, advertise the public here and on LHA website. Okay. Uh, advertise. My question is, it was as I told you, this paper that you advertise, you know, it's kind of like a notice. Notice to put some people look through it in the miscellaneous section. You know, a lot of people here couldn't afford it, didn't even see it. And we had a monthly newsletter. You could have easily advertised it there. You have a robocall. You could have easily announced it there. And you plastered the doors with notices. So it doesn't make sense. It seems to me that this isn't done very well. And it said whole quarterly meeting with LTO or RAB non-applicable. You have an LTO here that's in Fort Sander, do you not? So I don't know why they would be non-applicable. Notify all LTO RAP if there is one of the hearing and provide access. I know Fort Sander had one meeting, but so people who don't have a tenants association, just exclude it. You like got to fit for yourself, even if you don't pay for the newspaper uh, to see the uh, uh, notice. So again, I'm going to ask, and I would wish that uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Jeffrey Jones here is to table this for one month. That's still not enough time. Usually I'm told these things take six months and it's a lot of work with residents who are very much involved. So not to do that, I think is, mis is misguided. And I think that they have a lot of stuff and they need to be heard from. So it kind of breaks my heart that uh, it's already done. It's probably cut and paste from last year, it looks as if. And it's like, oh, presented that it is a great thing that everybody should be on board with when I don't think it is. Um, so I'm asking, I don't know if you wanted me to make that into a motion, if we could table this, the discussion and the voting on this for next month. And then in the meantime, like I gave you the ways to reach uh, tenants, you know, when you had the appreciation dinner, it was plastered two and three times because you wanted that participation. Why not something as vital as this? So you can get some tenant participation and, and it's possible you may not get any. I think if people got were able to participate, they would. If they understood what they were participating, I think residents would like to be a part of it. So I'm asking you, because part of our bylaws, it says to show compassion. What's all that stuff it said? Fairness to our residents. Well, I have it here. So I'm asking on those grounds, if we could do that. Uh, let me see. Let me get it particular, what I'm trying to uh, tell you, that I think we should think about this. It says, I, it, I was very touched. I'm always rereading the um, bylaws, but it says uh, the board and the housing are committed to the personal growth of board staff and tenants, excellent in public service and being accountable and transparent to all stakeholders, which would include residents. And that they said the board, they're committed to advocating for low income housing and the interests of tenants, as well as forming partnerships with um, the greater Northampton. Uh, I didn't quite say that, I said that. And it says, uh, so I'm saying on the spirit of that, what I bylaw, bylaws dictate or voted on, if we could at least, I say two months, but maybe a month and then all efforts get involved in trying to involve uh, tenants, not just me, because I can't be paying for everybody's copies. I can't even afford now to even go to meetings that I have to pay for, but it shouldn't be our, it shouldn't be our duty to educate ourselves. You put hands in under Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, okay. please continue. I thought you were done. No, 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 go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. As I understand, the commissioner is making a motion to table the state annual plan vote 
for two months. Am I correct in hearing? Am I hearing that correctly, Commissioner Tarbetton? I said two months, but I'll take one month. No, no, you have to make the motion. So okay, then I'll, I'll say two months. But one, one to two months. Okay, no, one to you need to make a date certain because this is such an important thing. Okay, then it, well, well, if we can get it all out to everybody, information about the meetings and stuff, and then that can come from housing to send that out and send the notices and robocalls out, then that should be fine. But if it's word by word, you know, that may be a little difficult to do. So if housing can uh, do that, sure, one month. Okay, I understand the motion has been made by Commissioner Tarabutton to table voting on the annual plan for one month. And I'll ask if there's a second. A second. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. So the motion has been made to table voting on the annual plan for one month. And I'll ask, I'm gonna open the floor to discussion. Madam Chair, if I may just let the board know that it's due to the state by April 28th. Okay, it's due to the state by April 28th? Yes, okay. ma'am. And today is April 24th? Correct. Would we have time to call a public meeting um, in time? And meaning we'd have to have that special emergency meeting tomorrow or the next day, right? Why not? We're required I, I, to advertise. I can't make it. I can't. Yeah, I can't make it there the Wednesday. That, that and I don't know the, whether when I'm just going to say I'm going to start asking people now among the board to speak only to the issue of postponement, not to the merits of the plan itself. But and uh, uh, um, we've just heard from Director Leeper that we must turn in the plan on Thursday. So is there anyone else who would like to um, add some thoughts to this among the board. Uh, Commissioner Richards. Yes, uh, given that timeline, there isn't any way, I don't think we could get public involved with any integrity at all. It was advertised. I believe the law was uh, adhered to in terms of publication. So I just don't, I don't see uh, us being able to pull anything off in a month. I mean, in like two days, that would that was going to be uh, helpful. Anyone else like to offer any comment on that before we vote on the postponement? Yes, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Commissioner Richards. We we have like a couple of days is not enough time to do something um at least you know responsible and um, um but i i will say that um whether we followed the law this time or not and we um um and i know that we 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 do send these things out to the paper but commissioner tarbon has a, a, an excellent point that not a lot of people um uh, can even afford the paper or read the paper. Um, I think we can do a, a much better job at advertising um, these annual plans and really make it a participatory process uh, where um, uh, not just uh, board members, but that tenants can also be um, uh, like, like we, I would like for us to see more of an outreach to get input on these annual plans um, and funding that we get. Like for instance, same thing with the ARPA funding. I didn't think we did a good job at involving our community of residents um, to uh, take part in that process. So uh, um, that's part of the reason why I am uh, for uh, postponing for another month. Um. I'd like to hear from any, <clears throat> we already heard from Commissioner Tarbutton and from Commissioner uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna, and from I'm, Commissioner. I'll, yeah. I'll speak. Uh, I'm just gonna agree with um, Marilyn. Um, this um, type of th thing happens every year um, where because of the restriction um, from one 
year to the next, um, we're, we're almost at the, the uh, end of this fiscal year. The state is, is as much to blame for this as anyone else more so because most of the things that Kara gets that we have to get out the door in two days is something that, ha that has happened every year that I've been on the board. Um, so it, so if, if you think that there's a way to light a fire under the state to get this information to Kara, so, she, so, it, can, so it can be put on the, our agenda, please, please tell me what it is because I don't know what it is, but this is something that we go through every year. Um, uh, so as, as an old board member, I've seen it every year that I've been on the board. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's part of the whole, part of the whole problem with Massachusetts sometimes. So I'm just gonna say, as Marilyn said, we don't have the time um, if there's a way to get it faster to Kara next year, certainly. Um, you know, I agree totally with a total outreach to all the, all the tenants to have them get the information. But sometimes, sometimes things just don't move fast in the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. And we have two more hands I'm going to hear. First from Commissioner Tarbutton, then Commissioner Cancel, and then I'm hoping we can vote on this is on the issue of postponement. First, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, thank you for giving uh, adequate discussions with this, whether it's a postponement or not. And of course, you know, J uh, Commissioner Brooks, I have a lot of respect for you, and I do realize you've been on this for a while. My question is, going to postpone it. This has happened for a while. We ain't per perfected this now. When you say every year, then I have to ask. How many residents are participating every year? Why is it that residents don't know? And I know not every year we get brand new residents everywhere. I think that, for example, if I didn't come in, Commissioner Brooks didn't come in, uh, Commissioner Cancel didn't come in, and Commissioner uh, Marilyn uh, Richardson didn't come in, you wouldn't have quorum. You couldn't get this voted on. So I know from watching somebody work on a grant that you had a deadline that day and they said, we haven't gotten the stuff here. We can't do this. And they said, we'll give you another month. So the fact to say, sorry, mm, well, this is how it is. Then why tenants are the one at the brunt of the target where we're not getting appreciated? There is a way you can find out things and why this hasn't been on the agenda every month and get together, folks, let's do this. Appreciation dinner, they should have had this as an appreciation. And my thing I want to say, because I am resident centered, when we want to give somebody a raise and we want to do this or a uh, 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 get them to sign their a uh, uh, um, uh, contract a year beforehand, you find a way. Why can't you not do that for residents? They deserve that at the very least. And I don't care if it's five days, that means you try. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton and Commissioner Cancel. Yeah, again, I think the issue here is, is how, how much are we, um, how much effort are we putting into uh, making sure that there's more tenant participation um, in the um, deciding of what's going to happen with the properties that they live in? Um, and again, I don't think it, it has been done uh, at all. I've lived in in Northampton most of my life, and uh, I still don't think <clears throat> we do a good job at this. So. Um, whether it's a public meeting, those are very easy to, to schedule. Um, and we can put flyers on people's doors or robocalls as um, Jada suggested, but we can definitely do a better job at uh, getting the residents involved. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much everybody for your comments on this issue of postponement. And now I'm going to ask the secretary to call the um, roll on the issue Madam of Chair. postponement. Oh, I'm sorry. There was one more hand. I yeah, apologize. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm having Commissioner some Richards. technical. I just wanted to say I don't disagree with uh, involving residents more. That being said, I think we can do a better job of it, and I hope that we will in the future. To me, that's a whole nother agenda item separate from, from the approval of this annual plan, which is due in a few days. 
and I'd like to see it on a future agenda. But I would hope that we would approve this plan to be on time with the state. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. And um, on the issue of postponement, is there, we've already heard, I think from everybody at least once or twice, but we can hear again if you wanna speak a third time. I want just one quick thing to yeah, say. Yeah, go ahead and Commissioner Cancel, why not? Me or Cancel, who would you say? Oh yes, you first and then Commissioner Cancel on, please limit your remarks to the issue of postponement. Uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I just wanna say, uh, yeah, cause I knew it was postponed. I, I, thanks for reminding me though. Well, I just wanted to say is that you're right. We, we talk a lot sometimes about, we should do this certain agenda and it doesn't get done. Remember when I first started, we should do some trainings. We should do that, never got done. I think this is like, cause who can argue when you say tenants aren't involved? You would say that would be wrong and cruel. That would be violating your bylaws. So you say, okay, but we'll do it next year. Martin Luther King wrote a book called Why We Can't Wait. Y'all been here 10 years and y'all been here a long time, way more than me. And you haven't figured this out how to get tenant involvement. That's shame on you. Shame on you guys. I vote absolutely no on this. I just think we should do, there's a thing, you know, die trying, die trying to do what's right. And that's all I'll say with that. So vote how you will, it's probably pre-made up, but I say no, tenants need to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. And would you like to take us out, Commissioner Kansas? No, I was just gonna um, uh, say that um, if we could agree to, um, passable if if we do um, um, uh, a better uh, attempt at getting getting uh, tenants involved the next time by way of either a poster or a flyer or uh, robocalls. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. If I do have a will... correction. Madam yes, please, Chair. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton said. We had talked about training and it never happened. Well, I believe that we all were at a training that was sponsored by Northampton Housing Authority uh, only just maybe a month or so ago. So training okay, does only because uh, only because only because this was something brought up by Commissioner Tarbutton, but we we're not getting into we need to only yes, talk I about the it. postponement. And I know that Commissioner already Commissioner Tarbutton wants to respond to your remarks. So I'm going to ask that we move directly now to the vote. Oh no, remark. I don't get to remark on that. I don't get to remark on that. Uh, all right, go go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Just very simple. With the chair to yeah. Commissioner. Okay, when I, to when Commissioner, I first... I'm sorry, Commissioner Richards, I cut you off. I'll let Commissioner Richards finish first, and then we'll go back and forth between Commissioner Richards and Tarbutton. Go ahead, Commissioner Richards, please. No, all I just meant to say is that we have had training. Commissioner Tarbuck. Just a simple correction. Oh, well, okay. Well, thanks for that. You did. Uh, we did have training about a month or two ago, February, but that was supposed to start a year ago. It would have been so helpful a year ago. We postponed it. Not all everybody's fault with that, but I thought other trainings that we went through and we have not. And I, you were the first one who said that because you used to say you're new, you're new, you're new. And you're right about that. Uh, okay. That's a long time a year, but it got done, but it would have been really helpful when the issue was at hand, we could have dealt with that. So I just think this is gonna be swept on the rug and I hope not. You had plenty of time when you were here to get this stuff done and get a tenant participation. And the fact that nobody's thinking about that except a tenant. I'm sorry, is there any other comment from board members? Okay, is there someone who would like to, uh, then I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and ask the secretary to call the roll on postponement. Yes, this motion is to um, table uh, the resolution 2023-03 approval of the FY 2024 state annual plan. Uh, those in, uh, uh, Chairperson Carney. No. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. No. 
Commissioner Tarbutton. You're muted. I'm sorry, definitely yes. Commissioner Richards. No. Thank you, that motion fails to postpone. I'd like the secretary now to call the roll for the motion that was made to approve the annual plan. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, resolution 2023-03, approval of the fiscal year 2024 state annual plan. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. No. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. No, uh, it, it's. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion carries. Yes. Point of information, point of information, yes. please. Yes, please, yes. The one that carries, I hope the corrections are made. I'm I'd sorry, like what correction? Oh, we already have the Scribner's error has been noted, yes. Which are the names on the, um, and the dates of expiration of commissioners that's listed on the front page. It's been noted. So hopefully before it's submitted, those will be corrected. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I assume. Uh, let's confirm that with Secretary Leeper. Can those um, commissioner names and expiration dates be corrected before submission on uh, Thursday to the yes. DHCD? Yes. Yes, it, uh, it's, a, it's a DHCD template um, that we've been working on since January, so that's why some of the dates are different. Um, and yes, we can make the corrections and we'll do so before submission. Okay. Uh, Thanks, I, everybody. I, I'm sorry, I, what's that, Commissioner Tarbutton? I think you need to check all the pages with the dates, if you could, because this seemed like this was last year, cup and paste, so if you could just check that too. Some of them, when I got that, I thought this wouldn't go without that, so if you could just check that too to make sure. Or would that, if it's not, would it be invalid? I'll check it. Commissioner Leeper, can you do a final proofread to make sure that all the dates and yeah. things like that, because I understand that it's a template from the DHCD and some of those things self-populate from year to yeah. year. So given that that is a software automatic, can we just make sure that yes. any of those particular things are taken care of? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Thanks. <clears throat> All right, so the next item of business is, I'm sorry. So um, it is the motion, I'm sorry. I gotta get the first motion. We did the annual plan and now we have, and so this is the motion that was, um, uh, captured from the recording from the last meeting. And so um, it, as written, it was training is encouraged for all board members, budget $12,000 and funds asked for three months in advance and approved by board. Um, it was made by Commissioner Tarbutton and I think seconded Commissioner Brooks. Now, um, I think we're open for discussion. Point of, uh, point of information. So this is the one that I made for 12,000. Actually, I, I don't know if it's too late, but I'd like to withdraw it. In light of what I just learned from the board that there is money there and also could include an additional 12,000 for uh, air travel, as it put it, for professional staff. So I don't want a shortcut. So I would like to withdraw that. Okay, motion is withdrawn. Motion is withdrawn from uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. And um, the, the second, you're okay with withdrawing that motion? <laughs> that motion. <laughs> so the motion is withdrawn hereby. And we'll go on to the next motion. The next item of business. Now, I do want to point out that because the next item was written in a two-part way, we're gonna to have to, I'm gonna need a motion to divide this into two parts because the motion was put forth as revisit right. fees and notices associated if they participate in the ACH program and eliminate friendly reminder notice on sixth of the month. Those are two separate items. So if I could ask, please, that we divide those, I need someone to just make a motion to divide. 
Can I just also say a motion to withdraw? Because it is complicated and I withdraw it because I made those, so uh, withdraw it. Yes, uh, the maker of the motion has asked to withdraw that motion. And if the seconder, you also agree, right? Or not? Aggressive. Second. That was Commissioner Brooks. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that though that that two part motion is withdrawn. Okay. I think. We Can I just say something been... regarding that, Commissioner uh, Carney? I'm sorry, Chair. Can I I'm, just? Say I'm sorry. What's 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 this regarding the last one withdrawn? Yeah, I just want because it was two parts. I just want to say something uh, with that. Uh, I think I sent to you something with the law and reasonable accommodation with something about rent, I, I we haven't talked about that. So I'd like to get more information on that because I, as a commissioner- Are you asking me for more information? I, I sent that to you, but I'm just saying um, until there's more information, because it seemed like there was an additional piece with that as well. That was about a law about people not getting their disbursement. Are you saying you'd like to come back with a, with a more uh, clear motion? Well, I got- Mm, let me look it up. I have to ask some uh, legal help, the people who just wrote some of this stuff and see what that yeah. means to get more clarification. So uh, down the line, perhaps. But Well, thanks for the heads up. So we'll likely have another motion that'll come that's somewhat related to these. And we can look forward to that at the next meeting. Or, But actually, if you could send it to us, we can get it on the agenda. And I can let you know, you know, you, you know the same thing. If you send something that you know is going and you need some help, wordsmithing or whatever, you can let us know. I will let you know that we received a lot of communication from DHCD regarding um, reminders and notices to quit, et cetera. And that may be helpful information for the board at, at some point when this comes up again for discussion after a motion. So is there any other, I, well, we can't even ask for any other business. I think the only thing I can ask Executive for is- Executive Director's a final, report. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss the report? Our, our I, Director's I, report. So uh, what happened, uh, Director Leeper? How did I get to all of this new business and not and skip over the Executive Director's report? Did you not remind me? You were probably I, waving I, your hands. I did I did raise my hand, but I figured I- I'm so sorry, I apologize. It's okay, it's okay. For the um, disorder, go ahead, please. It's okay, um, and so um, let me just grab that out. Yeah. Um, so the Executive Director's uh, monthly summary for April um, 2023, our GPR was 210,165, with a total rent collected of 195,028.76, which represents 93%, of which $79,786.94 is current residents. Um, we had 189 public housing recertifications due this month. We had 79 Section 8, and we recertified all 189 in public housing, and we recertified 75 in Section 8, four of which are outstanding. Uh, due to uh, paperwork we're waiting on from the resident. Our wait list, federal applicants have uh, 96 on the one bedroom, 34 on the two, 23 on the three, four on the two, two on the four, um, and section eight has 58. And the state CHAMP app, uh, application process has family 17,233, which is an increase of 460 applicants. And the elderly disabled has 4,424, which is an increase of 120. We had four move outs in public housing and four in section eight. We had two move ins in public housing and six in section eight. We currently have two uh, on notice for move out. End of month vacant ready were two. End of month vacant unready were four. End of month total vacant six, five of which are pre leased. We completed four make readies, all four of which were complete rehabs. We took in 614 work orders. We started the month with 37 from the prior. We completed 526 work orders and there are 51 outstanding. We didn't have any follow-up necessary um, for from follow-up on resident issues brought up at the board. Um, I do want to uh, let the board know that um, through the LIHEAP, uh, Lean Multifamily Housing Program, um, uh, Jose um, had a death in the family, and so he was out. Um, and uh, then Jack did the, get the application, uh, the email. Um, we actually applied for that program um, through the Lean Multifamily on 
uh, April 13th of 2023. Um, additionally, I'd like to bring uh, to the board, uh, in the past, we've talked about um, DHCD doing surveys of residents um, and DHCD surveyed the 667 properties, which consists of Salvo, Four Sander, Cahill, and Tobin. Um, and I'd like to, um, I'm, I'm very excited to say they received a total of 70 surveys and we scored um, mostly higher than the whole entire state um, in our responses, uh, in the responses that we, that we got. If we didn't score better than we were equal to, um, and um, in almost every single area. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we received very high marks for Northampton, but also for the Hampshire County, which as you know, we manage. Um, additionally, our RSC team delivered summer eat surveys to all households at Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights to get the family's input on how to best set up and plan this year's summer lunch programs. The garden plot sign-up sheets went out to all residents at the properties with community gardens so that we can assign plots to residents who want to garden this year. Grow Food has been hosting community meetings with residents at most properties to discuss goals and ideas for the community gardens this upcoming season. We've been working very closely with them to support the goals and requests to help enhance the community gardens for everyone. We hosted informal sessions from Fallon Health's Navicare program and United Healthcare. Both are health insurance plans for senior care options. Fallon Health was able to present at all five elderly disabled properties this month, and United Healthcare has presented at two with the other three scheduled this week. United Healthcare also provided supplies for residents to do arts and crafts while listening to their presentation. At our elderly disabled properties, the podiatrist visited three sites the past month and 23 residents utilized this on-site service. We continue to work with DHCD regarding the pavement and basement mitigation. Uh, there was no new updates for April. But in addition to that, I had received uh, much ado about um, the friendly reminders and the notices to quit. And so I reached out uh, to DHCD um, to get clarification on that. Um, and uh, as a, in closing my report, um, we are required under the law and under the lease to provide residents with a notice so that they can come to the office to discuss why they haven't paid their rent. Without doing so, we may not submit a notice to quit. A notice to quit can be done on the seven, on the eighth day, so after seven days. DHCD, and I'm gonna quote this verbatim, this last uh, sentence out of their email. Uh, I would suggest sharing this information with board members and suggest to send the notice to quit on the seventh of the month in accordance with the lease agreement instead of sending friendly reminders. Um, I know that this uh, motion was, uh, you know, uh, withdrawn, um, but I, I don't recommend us sending notices to quit on the seventh. I don't think that it gives people enough time. Um, and um, Although it's within our rights to, to do that, um, we still have to send this friendly reminder as it is part of the law, 760 CMR 604, and part of the lease um, under Section 2 rent. Um, and so um, with that being said, um, uh, so ends my executive director's report. Thank you, Director Leeper. So now I'll ask if there are questions um, any board members have for Director Leeper and regarding her report? Yes, <clears throat> I think Commissioner Tarbutton had her hand up first and then Commissioner Cancel. Actually, I'm tired of my hand being up. I'll let someone else go first. Please, other people, and then I'll go. It's just Thank a quick you, Commissioner Cancel, and then followed by Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to wanted to make a, a couple of comments uh, regarding the survey. I went through that survey, and actually, I, I was very pleased with um, um, with the outcomes of that. There was a couple of uh, things that we could do better, uh, and we already know this, and um, actually have a plan in place, like the water problems. Um, we were at, you know, like sixty one percent. And uh, for instance, uh, how safe people felt in the in our development, we were at thirty seven percent compared to the and the entire state that was at sixty three percent. 
So I know we could do better than that. Um, and, and also the overall satisfaction um, that came, came out at 38% for the Northampton uh, compared to the entire state at 52. So that's a little bit of progress that we can make in these areas, but overall, um, I was actually very pleased with the surveys and, you know, I think we should do more of this. Thanks, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yeah, I pretty much agree. I think surveys are good. I even looked it up. I some I was told, you know, surveys are good. And I can go as a tenant can present a survey and I don't need the board or ED's report. That's from one meeting that I got. But I do think it is. I think that um, everything you do these days, it's a survey afterwards, a, a survey monkey, what? And I think it's important to get people's uh, uh perspective. Usually if somebody's doing a survey or somebody's coming on a campus is a talk because not everybody comes and visits. So I didn't hear anything. I'd be interested in these surveys. Not that you have to give me the name and where they live. I'm not asking for that. I'm just like, well, who was it? Because I, and I wondered how they chose uh, uh, these survey recipi recipients. Whenever I've been in a meeting with DH DHCD, I said, you need to do it. You need to hear what people are saying. Uh, so I think that that's great. I just have no idea. And I, I get worried because, you know, one time we had something they said tenant participation, and it was three out of like 4,000. I worry that that's the norm that is like, eh, eh. but I know no one who did it. And it's not my business to know. I didn't know DHC was doing that. So I would uh, like to know a little bit more about that. Or you can send me what they asked. <laughs> so a uh, part, part of your uh, board package, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, is the actual survey and in the very second paragraph, um, it says that in the fall of 2022, surveys were sent to 200 housing units of Chapter 667 in in the Northampton Housing Authority. Okay, so they, when in the fall? When they mail the these. They they. Well, I don't know. Uh, the fall is typically September, October, and November um, of 22. So they sent out. They mailed out to each person. Um, uh, that lives in our 667 properties. So they sent a total of 200 surveys out and they received, they received 70 surveys back. And how they're sent is they're sent, um, it, it looks just like the page that you got attached. And then what they do is they compile all the answers to come up with the overall. Um, well, and so that was part of your board package, um, mm -hmm. which and you're welcome to look at. Yeah, well, I, I, the only reason why I asked when, because, you know, in November, everybody was in a mad rush trying to get the balconies and stuff out. Was it during the holidays? So you have to think about that. I've probably, I've probably been even more participation. And if there was a notice, I, I read the newsletters that you have that say in case, you know, there may be a survey, but maybe we don't know. But, you know, whatever. We, we, we don't even know. We don't even know when they're going to do it. They just oh. they, it's their it's their survey. So. They don't even tell us that they're doing it. They just send out the surveys um, and and then get them back and they compile it and, and give it to us. So okay. So you you don't have any idea who they interview or who they survey. They 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 sent out an interview paper to every single resident that lives in our six six seven, which consists of two hundred apartments. Was that been of the two hundred, which includes you? I never got it. Or you, everyone in your building. Um, they sent these surveys out and they received 70 back. I can tell you, I never got it. So, okay, well, that's fine that they're doing it, but I never got it. I, I don't know anyone here who did because they would have been talking about it or asking somebody to help with it. I'll ask Angela if she got it, but I never heard a word of it. So, because I most definitely would have participated. So um, I just wanted to say that and now I'm losing my train of thought here. Oh, I just want... Uh, when you're talking about the, the thing about when is rent due, I thank you for not sending out the letters. I'm not uh, opposed to a friendly reminder. I just felt that the way it was written wasn't friendly. And it was some people, they thought that they were having a heart attack. It's hard to see. And I couldn't even ask people about it because they were angry with me like I did it. So uh, I'm glad that we do that. I mean, uh, if somebody asks for a reminder, that's fine. What I question is the part about um, because it follows with me that something's due on the first and I'm already late before I even get paid to pay the rent. And so I wonder if people who get a disbursement of SSI or SSDI, will they have to fill out a reasonable accommodation say, because I get this, please don't do this. 
where it was done before when it was the 12, uh, let me finish right quickly. So, you know, cause if you get 4,000 people, maybe five or 600 people who pay it on first, who don't have to have that, but the other people, do they have to do that? So they don't get threat of letters or fear the threat of le uh, letters because they can't pay it on uh, the sixth or the seventh. I, I worry about that. I'm just trying to keep us from all the paperwork and all potential lawsuits. I'm always thinking about what if this, what if that? So these are things that I think that should be taken in consideration. And I just, um, I, I just there's some there's some troublesome spots about that what's been going on and I just think again as I read the bylaws we want to treat people with compassion and you can say well we're getting them all in well if people feel threatened and coerced and intimidated they'll pay you out of fear I grew up where they had these loan companies they would call people and I'd see elderly people crying and that's what it feels like to me when that stuff is being sent out and I got a notice to quit on my birthday and I never got any time to talk down or anything like that. So I think it's presented as though this is how it's done, but in reality, it's not. So I wish we could work on that and really treat our residents with dignity. I'm not saying no one does, lots of things happen. I'm just saying, please put an emphasis on that because who else here pays all their bills the day it's on? You get a car payment, you got some days to pay for it. So we got to practice what we preach. Thank you. And may I please, uh, Director Leeper? I heard that as a rhetorical question and not necessarily something for you to answer and all those if I'm correct. So I'll ask, are there any other comments from board members regarding the executive director's report? Hearing none, I'll ask if there's a final motion that any board member would like to offer which would be non-debatable. Motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Who <laughs> said that? Okay. And I think yeah. I heard a second, and I'm sorry we can't discuss that motion. Under Robert's rules, it's non-debatable. Non can you please just oh. call the roll? God. Would you call the roll to adjourn? Yes, Commissioner Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Uh, I was going to abstain, but I'll vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Tarbutton. I think I'll say yes. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.